disk quotas. In earlier versions of Windows, if we wanted to limit users to only having a certain amount of space on a drive, we could give them permissions to the entire drive. Now this effectively meant that if you wanted to have a user save files on your server's E drive for example, which is say an 80 gig drive, then that user will be able to save up to 80 gig of data. Now you could further limit them by partitioning the drive into smaller drives, but that really isn't practical either. In Windows Server 2003, using disk quotas, we can control the use of disk space much, much better by allowing users to only have the ability to use a certain amount of disk space on a given disk. And we can have other users that we want to allow to have more space than the average user if they have special requirements or happen to be somebody important. Now when we enable quotas, the quota manager tracks files stored on a volume that are owned by the user. It then compares the user's allowed disk usage against their actual usage and when the disk space allocated to the user is nearly reached, it will notify the user to delete any unneeded files. And if the actual limit is reached, it prevents the user from saving any more files. Now this is a great feature, especially when we think about this from a backup perspective. From my own experience, many administrative problems occur from the lack of disk space. Using quotas allows us to control disk space rather than just let it all fill up. Also, from a backup perspective, it allows us to more accurately determine the amount of tapes we're going to need based upon the fixed limits that we've set. So to configure quotas, you must first ensure that the drive you wish to configure quotas on is formatted with the NTFS file system, otherwise you're going to be out of luck before you even attempt to start. Now we've got two ways to configure quotas. We can use Windows Explorer or we can use the disk management component of the computer management MMC. Now using the first way, we'd simply click on start and open up my computer. Locate the drive in which you want to configure quotas. In our case, we'll use our C drive as we don't actually have any other drives. So we'll right click, we'll select properties, and then we'll choose the quota tab. Now I'm just going to cancel out of this because I recommend becoming accustomed to using the Disk Management MMC rather than using Windows Explorer and there's a really good reason for this. In Windows Explorer you can only see disk quotas that are enabled for drives that are assigned a drive letter. But what happens if you want to assign quotas for mounted volumes? Now that's why we use the Disk Management MMC instead because it allows us to see these mount points. So we'll click on Start administrative tools and we'll launch the computer management MMC. Now under our storage snap-in we'll choose disk management. Okay so to enable quotas in the right hand pane of our disk management utility we'll right click on a volume, we'll select properties and then we'll select the quota tab. Now you'll instantly notice that quotas are not enabled by default so to enable them is as simple as checking the box enable quota management and then you can simply click on OK. But I'm not going to click on OK just yet, we'll just take a look at a few of our other options. OK, so what good are quotas if they don't prevent users from saving files when they've used all their allocated space? Well, they're probably not much point, so what we'll do is we'll check the next box here, which is to deny disk space to any users exceeding their quota limit. Now this will force our users to stay within a strict fixed amount of storage space. And in my mind, that's the whole idea of quotas anyway. Now you'll note here that our next option is to not limit any disk space usage for our users. But we'll fix that because we don't want our users to run rampant all over our hard disk. So we're going to choose this box here to limit our disk space to a certain amount of size. So we're going to say our users can't save more than 100 megabytes on this particular drive. And we're going to set a warning at 90 megabytes. So once a user has 90 megabytes of data saved on any part of our C drive, they're going to cop a warning telling them that they need to be more careful and start thinking about removing some old files. Once this user then hits 100 megabytes of data, they'll just be simply denied the ability to write any more data to our C drive until they go and free up some more space. And finally down the bottom here we have options to generate event log messages when a user exceeds either their warning or their entire quota level. So when a user consumes disk space above the warning level, 
they'll personally get a pop-up dialog box telling them that they're approaching their cutoff limit and they better start removing some old files and perhaps archiving some old files to tape or CD or they're soon going to find themselves running out of disk space. And in our event log, we'll get a message that references the same thing. Now in the middle of this window here, we've been setting the default values for our new users, but we can also create quota entries by individual user. If we come down here and click on the quota entries button, this will bring up a list containing individual quota entries. Now I'll just expand this to make it a little bit easier to see. Okay, now as you can see by default, there's only one entry in the list, and this entry belongs to the built-in administrator, and it's set to no limit. And that's a good reason that the administrator's account is unlimited. This enables the administrator to go and install software and patches and services and data and things like that without exceeding their quotas. Now, I mean, if you consider that administrators are generally the ones who move a lot of data around, then their quota would get maxed out pretty quickly. So it makes sense to exclude administrators from your quota entries. So to see the properties of this entry, we can simply select the entry, and then we can choose the Properties button, or we can right-click and select Properties. And here's where you can see what values are current for the selected user. And you can also change the quota entries for this account from this window. So we'll cancel out of this and we'll select the new icon up here to create a new quota. And this brings up the select user dialog box. So we'll type in the name of the user and we'll just click on check name and we'll choose OK. Now this brings us back to that dialog box we saw a moment ago where we can set the quota limit for the user. So we'll limit Bob by clicking on the Limit Disk Space 2 button, and we're going to limit him to 1 gigabyte. So 1000 meg, and we'll set his warning at 900 megabytes, and then we'll click on OK. Now don't forget that for our user Bob, his quota is not going to be defined by the defaults that we looked at earlier, which covers every other user, but instead, Bob's values are going to be configured here and these will override those defaults. So there you have quotas. They're terribly easy to configure and administer and chances are if you do decide to implement quotas in your environment then you'll likely have users contacting you to ask for this to be increased or wondering why they can't save files when others can. So before your support staff run off looking for problems that don't exist it's a good idea to check quotas first and then simply educate your users how they should go about managing their disk space utilization. Overall though, quotas are great for managing your disk space on your servers, and I thoroughly recommend that you take a good look at implementing quotas in your network.